Hey everyone. Happy Thursday. My name is Bethany. I am an education support specialist with Singer and I'm back again this week to talk to you about a different sewing machine. We're going to be talking about the M1000 mending machine today. So I'm going to give everybody a minute to jump on. Hello everybody. Welcome, welcome. I saw you guys earlier this week on Tuesday and I'm back again for another live. So I'm excited to see you twice in one week. So fun. We're going to be talking about the M1000 mending machine today. So if you have questions about this machine, this is a great time to ask. I'll do my best to answer your questions. I'm going to show you a little demonstration and let you know all the things that you need to know about this wonderful machine. Hello, hello. Hi everyone. Now, I don't know about you guys, um, but for myself, I am in like full spring cleaning mode. Um, this month is all about sustainability. Uh, next Friday is Earth Day. Um, so we're all about repurpose and reuse uh, and recycle. This month is our focus. Um, our project of the month is all about repurposing a shirt. And we talked about that on Tuesday in our live. And you can find that project of the month on singer.com. And so today I feel like it's only suiting or fitting that we talk about the M1000 mending machine because this machine is all about um, making things last longer. So I'll give you an example. Um, if you have a small child, my son, when he was little, would go through the knees of his pants so fast at recess. Um, they were always coming home with holes in his pants um, and tears in his knees of his pants. And he just played so hard, as a lot of kids do. Um, and so I would take those pants, usually it's like little khaki pants, and I would have to put something on the inside of the knee and I would stitch them up. Um, at that time, I didn't have a dedicated sewing space like this. So I was having to pull my sewing machine out, set it up on my kitchen or dining room table, do the mending and put it away. And at the time, I didn't have an M1000. This little machine is a little bit mighty. Um, it only weighs five and a half pounds. So it's quite easy to portable, be portable and on the go. It's so nice because you can pull it out of the closet, set it up real quick and put it right back, which is wonderful for uh, those of us that have limited sewing spaces. So this one definitely would handle the projects of mending holes and clothes and things like that. Now the M1000 is meant for light to medium weight fabrics. It is not meant for heavyweight fabrics like, like denims, okay? So this is not meant for hemming pants that are jeans or anything like that. That is more suited for our heavy duty line of machines. But most of your mending and hemming is gonna be on other types of materials anyways. So this is still a great machine. You can do other things besides mending on this machine as well. So. I want to kind of tell you a little bit about that as it just so you know um, some people will use this for quilt piecing it does a really nice quilt piecing um, and this is also a really great machine for beginners and children so if you have a child that's interested in getting into sewing and you're a little worried that you know there it's gonna be too much this machine gives you 32 stitch applications but without all the extra bells and whistles that can be overwhelming and confusing to someone who's just starting out or someone young. So this can be a great project or starter machine for them for their projects. Hi, hello everyone. We see more people popping in. So nice to see you guys today. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some of the features of this machine and why I love it. And then I'll show you how it sews. It's actually pretty quiet for a mechanical sewing machine and it handles really well. So let's kind of go into some of that. So I'm gonna bring you a little closer here. And behind me is the box that this machine came in. And you can see it's quite nice that you could just pop this machine right back into this box and it's not very big. So you can put that in a closet. Um, but let's talk a little bit about this machine. As I mentioned, it has several stitch applications. We'll be going over these here in just a minute. It does have a back stitch button that you can push down. Um, one of my favorite features on this machine, and I'm going to bring it a little closer. This is the nice part about it being so small, as I can literally pick it up with one hand. It has a top load bobbin, which is very nice, especially in a small mending machine, because you can always see how much bobbin you have left. 
This is obviously a common feature in our um, other machines, but I love that they put this into this smaller Mindy machine. So for beginners or children, it's great for them to be able to see and a reminder to check on their bobbin. And this just slides forward for you to swap it out. So easy. Um, one other feature, and I'm gonna show this to you while we're up close, is, and something you probably haven't seen before on our other machines, is this bar right here that goes around this foot and it protects the needle area. And what this is, is a finger guard. Again, if you have a child who's wanting to learn to sew and you're worried that they're gonna get their fingers too close, which is an honest concern, there is a finger guard on here. Now, if you are not a beginner sewist or you're not letting your child use this and you wanna remove this, you can, but I love that it has that feature specific for um, children to use to keep them safe. Now, this machine has this open space right here. This is that free arm for doing cuffs, um, for hemming and those kind of things. So I'm gonna kind of show you. I just grabbed a t-shirt real quick and I'm just gonna put the sleeve on here but it has plenty of space to go on the machine and be able to sew around. Normally, a sewing machine would have um, a cover that goes here with an opening compartment for your accessories, um, but this machine doesn't have that. It stays like this, and it's very easy to access this space for hemming and mending, which is very handy. All right, so now I will show you on the side of the machine, there is a thread cutter. And on the back, you're probably wondering, it looks a little different. My thread is not on the top of my machine, it's on the back. I'm gonna take my spool off real quick and show you that this just folds in and out. And because I'm using a bigger spool of thread with a bigger base here, I chose to put it on upside down. Um, but if you're using a regular spool of thread, you can put it on the other way. But it just was easier for me to do it this way. And then it just threads right up to the front and through to the front of the machine. One other thing that's different when threading this machine compared to some others is, and I'm gonna bring this up, this is that upper thread looper. So instead of it coming to the back and then coming back around and catching on a hook, this one actually is threaded through this hole. So as you're threading the machine, you wanna make sure that this is up so you can thread the thread through the hole and then back down to the needle. So that's one thing that's different on this machine than a lot of our other ones. All right, let me check and make sure we're not missing any questions. I know I'm kind of going through it quickly. All right. And on this side, you will find the hand wheel and the power cord. And this cord right here is where you plug in the foot control that goes on the floor. So I've got the foot control and the power cord plugged in. I am going to pull the foot control up real quick and show you it's actually quite small, so it's great for being portable and on the go and fitting in small spaces. Okay. And one other feature on this machine is the ability to wind bobbins. Some Mindy machines do not have that ability. It is great that this one does. So you can wind a new bobbin right here on this machine. So you have everything right where you need it. Now let's talk about the things that come with this machine when you get it. It will come with extra bobbing cases right here, or bobbing, and you get three here and it comes with one already in it. It does come with one needle in place, but you do have two extras here. It comes with a little screwdriver to change out your needle or remove your finger guard. And then as if you didn't notice already, this machine does not come with the automatic threader like a lot of our other Singer machines do. So they did provide you with a little needle threader to help you thread the needle. When threading the needle, because the guard is on, I would recommend putting the foot down and raising the needle to the highest position so that you can get to the needle easier for threading because of that guard being there. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about our stitches and I'm gonna kind of get you guys in a little closer so you can see. There we go. 
Okay, so we have a selection of stitches here. One thing about the Mindy machine is these are the stitches you, they, that it does, and there's no adjusting these stitches. There's no changing the stitch length or width. They are set in place. So let's talk about what some of these images um, mean. So these one, two, three, four, five, six stitches right here, these six, are all straight stitches. But there's slight variations in them, so let's go over those. This one right here is the stitch, if you can't tell, the stitch is to the left of that oval. That means that when you select that stitch, the needle will be in the left position on the far left side. These four in the middle are center needle position for the straight stitch. And then this far right one is a right needle position straight stitch. Now, why would you need four straight stitches that are in the center needle position? Well, they're different lengths. So this is a very short length um, straight stitch. And then we've got it like a medium, a long, and what we would call a basting stitch, the longest stitch length for a straight stitch. So I love that it comes with this basting stitch. A basting stitch is great for securing um, something before you go in and sew it um, even more um, just to hold things in place. You can also use basting stitches for um, putting in like two basting stitches next to each other and doing gathering. So that's nice that you can do some gathering with this. So you have um, six different straight stitch options and it's all based on stitch length and needle position, okay? Then I'm gonna go this way. This is a very narrow zigzag. This is a great stitch for stretch fabrics. And then we have another zigzag and another one. These are just a, um, different lengths and widths of the zigzag. This one is gonna be your blind stitch or blind hem stitch. And then this is a multi-stitch zigzag. This one is also great for doing mending and light repairs. All right, let me see if we have any questions about our stitches. I don't see anything. Hi, everybody. Thanks for hopping on. Awesome. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to um, just run through a couple of the stitches so you can see it in action. And I picked a fun, like, kind of like blue and purple fabric for today's demonstration. Something a little different. I did put a red thread in for the top so you all can see it really clearly. And I'm going to go ahead and just start with this multi-stitch zigzag so you can see it. It's the one that I had started with. And let's see here. Let me get my threads over here. You always want to kind of hold your threads down when you drop your needle so that your needle doesn't come unthreaded. All right, so I did my zigzag. Now before I take it off of there, I'm going to go ahead and change it to a different one. Um, I'm going to change it to, oh look, it's kind of hard to move it. You know why? I need to lift my foot. It definitely helps relieve the tension so you can change your needles, I mean, your stitch selection. You also wanna make sure that you get it where it clicks. If you stop somewhere where it's not right on that stitch, it will not stitch that stitch. It will probably just do a straight stitch. So I'm just telling you that so you can know in advance that you make sure that you get this little notch right here lined up with the stitch that you wanna do. And now I'm doing the blind hem. Stitch. And I'm going to stop and I'm going to switch over. Let me lift my foot. I'm going to switch over to, let's just do a straight stitch and I'll do the center needle position and we'll do this one. It's kind of like not the shortest stitch length, but the next one up. And I'm doing a back stitch. There we go. I'll lift my foot and trim my threads, and there we have it. So I did my multi stitch zigzag, then I did the blind hem, and then I did 
the straight stitch with the back stitch at the end. And I'm going to show you the back as well so you can see how nice and clean this looks. I did a different, I did the white for the bobbin and I did a red for the top thread just so you would be able to see them on camera. There we go. Now if you have a hole in your fabric or your knee of your kid's pants or something, you can take another piece of fabric, put it on the inside and use this machine to secure this closed. So what I'm gonna do is lower the foot and I'm gonna change my stitch back to, let's do a zigzag for this one. I'm gonna do the wider zigzag since I didn't do that last time, just to show you. And I'm going to drop my needle. There we go. And let's go forward, do my back stitch. Well, I got my fabric in my thread cutter. This happens when I do things with my left hand and I'm not left-handed. All right, so as you can see, I have closed that tear and used a piece of fabric on the back side to secure it so it reinforces that stit, that hole, so it doesn't come open again. Now, for me, on a kid's pair of pants, obviously I would choose a matching thread and I would probably go over this a couple of times because my kid is pretty rough on the knees of his pants when he was little. So um, I would probably go over it a couple of times, but as a quick way to mend a hole or mend a seam that has busted out. So another way to repurpose, reuse, and recycle and make things last longer. All with this little mini but mighty M1000 mending machine. One other thing that this machine does come with is a full instruction book. In this book, it not only goes over all of the stitches, but it also goes over some techniques for different types of mending. I really like um, this book and how it's set up in the instructions. It tells you how to change out the needles, different types of tension, um, when it's too tight or too loose, so some troubleshooting. It's very thorough, how to wind your bobbin, so for someone who's a beginner, this is a very beginner friendly instruction book. And I really, really enjoyed flipping through it earlier. And now I'm gonna look and see if we have any questions. Um, 1949 Singer Sewing Manual. If you're looking for a manual, they should be available on singer.com. But if that one is not available, send us a, a direct message and we'll see if we can find it for you, okay? That is an older machine, so let's see here. Hi from Miami. Hey, but it's warm and sunny down there. We're having a warm day here in Nashville, Tennessee, so I can't complain. Awesome. I don't really see any questions. Um, I hope you guys take advantage of learning more about this M1000. We have some great tutorials and more in-depth tutorials about it on Singer's YouTube channel. You can get an M1000 off of Singer.com. And if you have a child or someone who is looking to start sewing and they're very beginner and they're maybe even a little nervous about all the bells and whistles that most sewing machines come with, this is a great starter machine, especially for children. So encourage them and get them this machine. It's really small, so it's not overwhelming and intimidating to them. And they are able to put it up when they're done using it and then get it back out for their next project. I think this would be really fun for you know, learning to sew some small pillows or some doll clothes or things like that. Things that I started sewing with when I was little at seven years old, that's what I used to make. I used to sew felt for my little dolls and I loved it. So I love, um, I love how this machine is uh, very user friendly for beginners. So, all right guys, that is all I have today on this little guy, the M1000 little bit mighty and can do a lot of things. So check them out on singer.com. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you soon. Bye.